Good morning. I wanted to pop on and give you a quick demo using the arch analysis tool for analyzing satire and specifically understanding how the elements of satire support the author's argument. Remember, satire is always an attempt to make fun of human nature in order to affect change. So there's always going to be an element of argument. There's always going to be an underlying suggestion that we need to change our ways. First thing I'm going to do as I annotate this passage is number the paragraphs, and that will make it easy for us to understand how the author builds his argument through these parts. Okay, 14 paragraphs, but many of them are just one or two liners, so this is not difficult. Now, Common Lit has all kinds of built-in supports. If you look at a passage this long and your heart sinks because it just seems like it requires too much effort, you can have it read aloud to you. And if you do that, I would absolutely suggest you read along with your eyes in your mind so that as you work through the passage, you'll increase your reading fluency. Okay, let's take a moment and look at the advanced graphic organizer that I am asking you to use for this assignment. It is an arch analysis and can be used to analyze anything, any text. The way we're using it in this case is to break satire into its elements and understand how those individual elements, incongruity, caricature, irony, hyperbole, understatement, how all of how the author uses all of those things below the arch in order to make the overall argument stand out. So basically at the top of the arch you have the author's purpose. What is the function of the text? Why is the text being written? And I will put everything up here in green. What is this text's essential argument? So we know satire serves a specific purpose, and that purpose is to suggest change of some sort. After reading the article, you're going to fill in this part. What do you think the author's basic argument is about human nature, what aspect do we need to change, and why. And the way you're going to figure that out is by looking at all of the different features underneath. If you notice something incongruous, in other words, something that is out of place, what you'll want to do is two things. You will want to cite the text specific text evidence, that means you are giving just a small bit of evidence here. You're directly quoting the text. Many of you at this stage are giving me paraphrases of the text evidence. You're explaining what happens, but there's a risk there that you are staying in the land of plot summaries. So in order to break that habit, I'm really going to ask that you give cite the text here. Give me a small direct quote from the text, whether it's a word, two words, three words, the smaller the better, but you want to cite the text here. And then for number two, just so you're absolutely certain to include this, you need to explain what aspect of human nature is being mocked. So you will put your explanation here. Okay, I'm going to give you really specific, I'm going to give you very specific examples of this happening. Probably this wealthy teen, we're going to find elements of caricature. So we're going to keep our eye out for that. Now that caricature, just like when you're getting a caricature drawn at the state fair, they're going to look at your features, your nose, your ears, your eye, your chin, and they're going to over-exaggerate those features that make you an individual. So we're looking for elements that make this wealthy teen completely exaggerated. Let's see what we can find here. Somerset, New Jersey, and what local authorities are calling a near tragedy, Charles Wentworth, a 17-year-old Rutgers preparatory senior and member of the affluent Wentworth family, came perilously close to suffering a consequence 
resulting from his own wrongdoing Saturday. Okay, so when you're reading satire, you want to really comb through the text and look for any kind of exaggerations. To me, the name sounds is like a really haughty name. Charles Wentworth, it would be even more exaggerated if it were Charles Wentworth III, et cetera, et cetera. The family name is listed twice to emphasize the social prominence. If you miss it, you're given this little modifier, they're wealthy. Even perilously close, the diction of this news article is incongruous. You would never read in a newspaper pilot, for instance. That is such an elevated tone. It's kind of an upper crusty way of describing the situation that you would never find in a little local newspaper. Even the name of the school, this kid is not in public school. He's going to a private high school that is named after a famous university with a long history behind it. So every detail in that first paragraph establishes the context of this teenager's privilege. So I could already begin to fill in my graphic organizer. Okay, so I would say in this case, the language perilously loose. Again, you only need enough text evidence to prove your point. And you need to explain what aspect of human nature is being mocked. So the pe text evidence is perilously close and it's making fun of the formality, the stiff formality of the upper class. Okay, I feel like you get the gist of how I want you to use this graphic organizer. I'm going to punt it to you now and I'm going to ask you based in that first paragraph and what we said about his name, how is that name itself an exaggeration of his social class and what is the author making fun of. For full credit, what I'd like you to do is find at least an example and provide an explanation for five of these categories, that's as a baseline, and go as deep as you know I would want you to go with your thinking and with making that thinking visible. Thank you much. Good luck. Have a great week. Bye.